In 12 News, your local election headquarters, a live look at Capitol Hill, where Rhode Island continues to have a vacant congressional seat after a longtime Congressman David Cicilline stepped down last month. More than 30 Rhode Islanders announced they wanted to take his place, but this morning that number is down to one more candidate even to the final 14. 12 News reporter Jake Coulter is live in studio. Jake, who has dropped out of the race overnight? Yeah, Kate, we've learned this morning that progressive Democrat Nick Audiello is ending his campaign. Despite raising a significant amount of money, he said continuing the campaign would be, quote unquote, an act of vanity. Audiello added that staying in the race would only further confuse voters in an unprecedentedly crowded field. As of who's left, the Secretary of State's office lists 12 Democrats and two Republicans who have officially garnered the minimum 500 signatures to make the September 5th primary ballot. Here they are in alphabetical order. The Democrat candidates Gabe Amo, Stephanie Beauty, Walter Burbrick, Sandra Cano, Don Carlson, Steve Casey, Spencer Dickinson, John Gonzalez, Sabina Matos, Ana Quesada, Aaron Regenberg, and Alan Waters. The Republican candidates are Terry Flynn and Jerry Leonard. House Finance Chairman Marvin Abney fell short of qualifying by about 40 signatures. Now, the Secretary of State's office will hold a ballot placement lottery tonight, which determines what order the candidates will appear on the ballot. Early voting is now just four weeks away. That starts August 16th. The primaries are set for September 5th, and the general election is November 7th. Our coverage of this race continues at 8.30 with an update on a controversy over some of the signatures gathered for one of those candidates. Live in studio, Jay Coulter, 12 News. An update now in the race to represent Rhode Island's first congressional district. More controversy in Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos' campaign. More people have come forward to say their signatures were forged on her nomination papers. 12 News reporter Jake Coulter joins us live in studio to show us what these residents had to say. Yeah, Kate, a Target 12 review of more than three dozen signatures submitted to the Newport Board of Canvassers revealed at least three people who say they were not the ones who signed the nomination paperwork to help Matos qualify for the primary ballot. The signature scandal surrounding Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos' campaign continues to grow. The alarm bells were initially rung by election officials in Jamestown on Monday. They asked Jamestown police to look into supposedly fraudulent signatures submitted on behalf of the Matos campaign. And now several Newport residents tell Target 12 their signatures were forged on nomination papers submitted to election officials for Matos. Target 12 sent Christopher Roy pictures of his purported signature on the document, which was listed as accepted by election officials. His reply, no, that is not my signature. Newport resident LaJourney King says the same thing happened to her. King says she didn't recall signing nomination papers for Matos. And after sending an image of the signature, King responded by texting, LOL, heck no. The daughter of Leslie Veray says the signature of her mother used on the paperwork wasn't valid either. Quote, looking at the signature, I can tell you for a fact that is not my mom's signature. It's too sloppy to be hers. Matos issued a statement Tuesday night saying, quote, while it is clear we have submitted more than enough signatures to qualify for the ballot, I am deeply troubled by what has been reported in the news. Anyone who violated the law should be held accountable and will have no role on my campaign. Now, these signatures in both Newport and Jamestown were submitted by Holly McLaren of Providence, whom Matos campaign manager Brexton Isaacs has described as a campaign supporter. McLaren didn't immediately return a call from Target 12. Live in studio, Jay Coulter, 12 News.